In this session, we will going to learn what are the SAML terminologies that we need to understand before applying SAML in Salesforce. So basically, SAML uses a specific terminology that we must understand before implement it in Salesforce. The first one is identity provider. We heard this term frequently, even in our previous session as well but let's refresh it again. So it is a trusted service which authenticates a user. We can take an examples like Google, Facebook, and Salesforce. The next one is service provider. So it is a service which a user want to access. For example, Salesforce or any web application. The next one is SAML request. So when a user attempt to access the service provider, the service provider sends a SAML request asking the identity provider to authenticate the user. So for example, if you want to access Salesforce and on the back end, you have Google as your identity provider, then Salesforce will going to send a SAML request to Google, which will going to authenticate the user. The next one is SAML response. So to authenticate the user, the identity provider sends a SAML response to the service provider. The response contains a signed SAML assertion with fact about the user. So we take the previous example only that when Google authenticate the user, it will send a SAML response to the Salesforce. So the next one is SAML assertion. A SAML assertion, which is a part of SAML response, describes a user by asserting facts like username, or email address. During authentication, the identity provider signs the SAML assertion and the service provider validates the signature. So SAML assertion is basically an XML file you can say, which contains user information like its username or email address. Also that file is digitally signed and that being validated by the service provider and the identity provider. In the next session, we will going to explore what are the flows that we can use to apply SAML in Salesforce.